Hey everyone, I am Dr. Shireen Idris, a cosmetic dermatologist based in New York City, and I hope you're all having, so far, a very pleasant and peaceful Saturday morning, and welcome to my channel. If you have not subscribed, please feel free to subscribe below, turn on the bell notification. I try to release a video every Saturday morning. And just a gentle reminder, once we hit 100,000, I will be doing a giveaway. I still need to figure out the terms of the giveaway, but hopefully I'll be announcing that very soon. I'm very excited and thank you all for joining along this ride. Um, I do this a couple of times a week on Instagram through Insta stories. And most recently since December, I would say I've been more consistent with YouTube as I've promised you guys that I would show up every Saturday morning to learn and teach and grow together about some new subject. So this week, we are going to attack below the neck. And um, I thought it would be a fun segue last week since I spoke about hair care to talk this week about keratosis pilaris. What is that? Keratosis means too much keratin. Pilaris means hair follicle in Latin. And therefore, keratosis pilaris means too much keratin around the hair follicles. That's what it means if you're questioning it or wondering what it meant. So we are gonna, here on forward, refer to it as KP because it's such a long word that I get tongue twisted when I say it. Um, and so I'd rather just call it KP, but just know that whenever I say it, KP stands for keratosis pilaris. I've actually had a lot of you guys message me about this particular issue. So I figured why not just do a quick short video talking about it. What is it? How does it look like? What does it feel like? mistakes that people make and how you can what you can do to help yourself so what exactly is it keratosis pilaris is a benign skin condition it is not a disease you cannot catch it by touching it it is not infectious in any way shape or form and it is not going to affect your health in the long run at least your physical health in the long run it is a nuisance However, it can be distressing to many who have it and can affect their, their psyche and their overall mental well-being. And so if you are somebody who has this skin condition and are mentally bothered by it, there is no harm in trying to seek help. So that's what this video is for. Um, now, I described what it is, sort of, and I talked about the mental connection, but I never actually said, what is it exactly? It is a skin condition that usually affects the outer arms as well as the thighs and butt. This is sort of a very broad generalization where you get these rough feeling bumps on your skin, um, particularly around the hair follicles. So the hair growing out of your arms, your legs, and everybody has a little bit of hair on their butt. What happens is that, sorry, I have a little bit of a scratch here. What happens is that the keratin lining the hair follicles as it comes up and desquamates, meaning it comes off the surface and breaks off, it doesn't fully break off and therefore it forms a plug on the outer surface of your hair follicle, meaning on the opening of your hair follicle, leading to these little bumps. So these bumps that we see around each hair are keratin plugs that have not been broken off and therefore accumulate over time, giving the appearance of goosebumps or plucked chicken skin. That is literally what KP is. And so when you run your hands on your arms, you can sometimes feel, I, I used to have it much more when I was younger, but I'm typical of after the age of 30, sometimes they tend to disappear. I have a couple of them, but when I would run my arms on my hands on my arms in the winter rather, I remember feeling them and really wanting to try to like scratch them off, which would make things worse. So that's why I think it's important if you're somebody who has a little bit of OCD tendencies or if you have the itch associated with it or if you have the mental connection associated with it, better to try to figure out how to help control it and minimize its overall symptom and look. Who exactly gets it? It usually affects kids and teenagers and tends to be most prominent in early adults, so below the age of 30. People who have a history of really dry skin or asthma, eczema, hay fever, tend to get it more than people who don't have those issues. Additionally, family history is key because there's usually a family connection. So if your mom, your dad has it, you're more likely to have it than not. 
I'll also say the winter is probably the hardest time for people with keratosis pilaris because the dry air makes it worse and brings it out more prominently. So those are all things for you to keep in mind. Additionally, if you have a higher body mass index, um, if your weight is on the higher end of the spectrum for your size, that can also contribute. Um, number two, certain medications. If you have melanoma and are, and are on certain <laughs> I am tongue twisting today, and are on certain medications like vemurafenib. I said that right, <laughs> vemurafenib. Um, you can have KP come to light. So just just for you to kind of keep that in mind. What are the symptoms associated with it? Some nothing. It can be completely asymptomatic and just there. So you would only know that you have it if you run your, your hands around your arms or your thighs or your butt. Or it can be really itchy and annoying, which I think you know warrants a closer look for you to actually treat it. Even though medically it's not gonna cause any long-term issues, I still think it's worthwhile trying to figure out how to get that under control. As I mentioned, KP is a skin condition that is ultimately gonna affect you for a long time. For most people, it burns out within their 30s. However, that's not the case for many, and many people have to deal with this for longer than that. My sister, for example, included. Um, I will say that when you have KP, the goal is to look for maintenance therapy, to learn your skin, to understand how to ebb and flow with it when you're gonna have a flare up, how to deal with it, and how to treat it to its full potential to minimize any flare-ups that it would have on its own. So things you do to trigger an intentional flare-up, avoid shaving and waxing. These are two very harsh and abrasive treatments, especially waxing bah, 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 or shaving where you're cutting the skin that can actually trigger hyperkeratinization and trigger a flare-up. You might wanna consider laser hair removal and we will get to that in maintenance therapy. Avoid taking long hot showers or baths because this can further dry out your skin, further exacerbating your condition. I'll also say bar soap is probably not your best friend. Neither is a very foaming cleanser or body wash because usually when they're extremely foaming, they tend to be more drying. Dryness is not your friend. Skip self-tanners. Only because are self-tanners going to trigger it? No. But are self-tanners going to make it worse? Maybe. Because what self-tanners do is that it accumulates in the keratin and it might actually enhance the appearance of the, appearance of the hyperkeratinized hair follicles. So I would just kind of shy away from self-tanners if you are self-conscious about the look of it because it will make it more prominent appearing. And finally, if you are living in a very dry environment, if it's a very cold climate and you have the heaters blasting, humidifiers can be your best friend and help you l soothe your skin over time and keep it much more supple. And this is where we're gonna get into maintenance therapies, what you can do to help yourself. Um, so like I said, treatment is not going to be necessary medically. It's not like you're curing anything with KP. All we are doing with everything that I'm going to mention is figuring out a way to best calm your skin, to minimize its appearance, and to minimize any potential flare-ups that it can have on its own or triggers. Number one, in the shower, when you are showering, like I just said, avoid bar soap, use a cleanser that is loaded in either an alpha hydroxy acid or a beta hydroxy acid. So glycolic, lactic, or salicylic acid can all help to buff your skin. What I would also say is I would use it on my arms and my legs and my backside five minutes before jumping into the shower, giving it a chance to actually sit, do its thing, and then wash it off with lukewarm water in the shower. So I think that can be very, very helpful. Ones that I like are Neutrogena's Oil-Free Acne Wash. This one is a salicylic acid acne treatment, but it's a nice and affordable option that you can put on your arms and your legs that can definitely help in the shower. Additionally, if you're not somebody who's into salicylic acid, Skin SkinCeuticals has a purifying cleanser, a gel cleanser. So this one is conditioning with glycolic acid. 
I actually like this one a lot. Um, I find it to be very, very gentle. It also has glycerin in it, which tends to be more hydrating, and it doesn't dry me all, out as much as the other one does. So this is one that you can also use and invest in. Um, Glytone is a skincare line. I have never actually opened this one. This is a mild cream cleanser. They have a exfoliating body wash that is specifically formulated for the body with vitamin E, which adds extra hydration. So they actually have a kit of a wash and a lotion that you can use simultaneously once in the shower and once you're out to help minimize the appearance of keratosis pilaris. Um, so these are all washes that you can use in the shower that are usually people I think would think of for their face for acne, but that can definitely benefit keratosis pilaris as well. If you're not into these washes and you'd rather use less, but you're willing several times a week to do a light chemical exfoliant, chemical exfoliation, then I would say before moisturizing, this is one by Starface. It is the night water. And in this, you have lactic acid and niacinamide, which helps with the inflammation. Because with KP, sometimes we get some redness around the hair follicles and not only are they skin colored or white bumps but you also have an element of redness there that might be prominent so this is a nice one pretty affordable that you can put on your arms and your legs as well several times a week for the redness a little out of left field arnica can also help minimize its appearance worth a shot especially if you are disturbed by the redness and cannot afford in office laser procedures um, this is one that i would say definitely worth look, looking into this is arnic care it is a gel and you can definitely use it on your arms and your legs for the redness associated with kp um, so that is all exfoliating cleansers exfoliating acids moving into moisturizers when you're looking for a moisturizer tackling kp you want one that is loaded with either a BHA, an AHA such as lactic acid or glycolic acid, and even urea. And so I don't have any urea examples here. I usually prescribe it for my patients. However, I do have a great lactic acid one, which is found um, at any local drugstore. This is M-Lactin. It has 12% lactic acid, and I love it for my patients. I usually tell patients to use this um, daily especially after they shower when their skin is still damp and then the other time of the day whether that's morning or night if you shower in the morning then use it at night so twice a day this is you're going to be your bff if you don't love amlactin like i said you can use creams designated for the face for acne on your body this is one by paula's choice it has eight percent aha in it so it definitely is very lightweight a little bit goes a long way um, but it helps to buff your skin um, and finally, after you've used any of these moisturizers, let's say you don't want to use a acid-based moisturizer, what I will tell you is retinols can also be very helpful. I actually just jump straight to prescription strength, try to know in, um, lowest concentration first that I tell my patients to use on the back of their arms or legs at night. If they get very dry from a prescription strength tretinoin, the next thing I like is the French A313 because it is in a macrogal base. So a little bit goes a long way and it spreads and it does tend to lock in moisture. But after I do this, I will moisturize with a regular moisturizer. I like this one by Aveeno. It is the Restorative Skin Therapy Oat Repairing Cream. So it has soothing properties as well as pro-vitamin B5, which is basically panthenol, um, and as well as the colloidal oatmeal. So I like this one to help calm and soothe. If you're super dry, I love this Aquaphor ointment, body spray, which is wild because it is basically like Vaseline or Aquaphor, but in a spray form. So when you put it on, it has really nice spreadability but within like probably I'd say a minute or two, it doesn't feel as heavy as Vaseline would on your skin. So it has much more breathability while locking in everything else that you've used. So this is another great one, especially in the winter. So yeah, that is KP in a nutshell. I hope these tips help. Oh, we didn't talk about in-office procedures. Um, I guess it's gonna be, it's a very long scope, but in-office procedures, I would say, um, laser hair removal can definitely help to minimize the 
plug that forms around each hair follicle. Also, lasers targeting redness, like a pulse dye laser, can minimize that overall red appearance that you get on your arms or your legs and can make a big difference. Um, IPL, which is not a laser, it's a light, can tackle a little bit of the redness and some of the hyperpigmentation that sometimes forms with keratosis pilaris. And finally, if all else fails and you're extremely bumpy and textural, you might look into a Fraxel resurfacing laser therapy that helps to smooth out and buff the appearance while promoting fresh collagen production underneath. So that's a last resort as well as, sorry, just thought of this one, um, a in-office chemical peel or microdermabrasion treatment. Um, those ones are, I would say, are more um, symptomatic relief rather than longer term. I think the most long, the longest term treatment is gonna be the laser hair removal as well as the laser targeting the redness. So yeah, hope this was helpful. I am Dr. Shireen Idris. Um, my brain is farting all over on this Saturday morning. Um, I will try to edit this video so that it makes more sense consequentially. So if it jumps, I apologize. And yeah, please make sure to like, subscribe. Any of the products I mentioned are going to be linked below. So you can feel free to check those out. Hope you guys have a great Saturday.